Okay, my outstanding friends, we're going to talk about more Gallon's disease today, and this is literally the surface of skin. This is an anatomical, you know, extremely microscopic shot. Now, this would be the blood vessels, which are the capillaries, the very tiny little end pieces where the blood transfers from you know the arterial artery back to the vein to go back to get fixed back up now what do you see when you see Morgellons disease you see fibers coming out of here they scratch the skin because they just so itchy well what's good something's going on down in here these are those same colored fibers let me show you what they look like and then if you want to get really deep into the research I'm going to have a very deep research about it, about it because I, I think this, I can understand almost every cause in the body, I believe is related to probacteria versus bad bacteria. And we have to know what resides in these places. I want to get through to all of the different research facilities and to speak to them about it. I have a lot of research on this. I'm not just a guy off the street that has some kind of theoretical idea. No, I have actual research and I'll show you. Now this is Morgellons. These are the fibers that are coming out from the skin when they scratch them. It's, it's kind of a, a nasty disease to have. And they thought these people were just insane for saying they were having these kind of things. Oh, that's just fibers from your bed sheets and so forth. No. These are actually exuding out from the exact place I just showed you a moment ago, which is on underneath the skin. And they're scratching it, and they, the fibers are growing right out of there. Now, that's not normal. Something is going on there. And now, it might be parasites. It's, they say it's linked to Lyme disease. Again, we're going to get deep, 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 deep into this. Because it also affects every other disease, I believe, in your body. Morgellons is just one of, the, one of the manifestations of this particular issue, which is bacterial imbalance. Let's go with that. All right, I'm just going to do this as an intro for today because you can see the similarity. That's the surface of your skin. They, the doctors say, oh, you're just scratching it, and that's why these are happening. Well, that may be, but some is causing them to scratch it. They're not just scratching it because they want to scratch themselves. And that's what they say. Oh, they got a psychotic problem. They're trying to self-injure them. I'm, I'm serious. And that's been up until right now. Some of them still say the same thing. <laughs> So, this is the intro. I'm going to do another one that's going to be the deep, deep look at what causes this and what you can do to, to help prevent this and every other disease there is. Okay, this just came out recently. Eight types of rashes that can be a sign of COVID-19. 21% of patients, that's the only symptom they had whatsoever, but they had COVID-19, and th that was one study found a rash was the only symptom of COVID for 21% of patients. That's one in five. It was just about the skin. Now, here's what happens to the skin, though. This can be really bad. These are the different, you know, this is what they're seeing now. I say that this has to have something to do with the 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 end blood vessels you know which is your lymphatic system and um rashes occur around papular lesions solid raised bumps or vesicles bumps filled with fluid are those the nodules i don't know the rash like this can pop up anywhere on the body but it usually develops on the elbows and knees as well as on the back of the hands and feet Heat rashes, for example, are a type of vascular rash. Now, why would it be elbows, knees, back of the hands, and feet? Well, your feet, I can understand, because that's one of the terminal spots of where your blood goes all the way down, and it's got to come back up. So that's where you ex ex expect some clogging. Anywhere you have joints and elbows and pinching and so forth, I would expect that also to be a place where you might get a little clogging. It's like bending a hose here and there. It depends on, you know, your posture and so forth, possibly. I don't know. But the, the rash is, is a symptom of something going wrong there, obviously. 
obviously what is going wrong what is it consist of what is the what's the chemistry there is there bacteria in there now let's look a little deeper into this because this really is important to understand and, and now I'll show you the, what it looks like some of these um, conditions now here's where I start to think maybe there's some connection here sometimes papular and vesicular rashes aren't so easily identifiable in some cases it is only tiny bumps all over the skin and the signs may be more subtle per the bad BAD is some kind of association in general the rashes are usually very itchy okay very itchy so something's going wrong. you can't get it's trying to expel that stuff or I don't know what it does but it's it's clogging up in there I believe I that's exactly what happens with the with the um, cat scratch fever <laughs> I mean the COVID I mean not it, it appears to be a similar situation it needs to be looked at what is what is there bacteria in there is there collagens and keratins that are, are, are globbed up together they really haven't looked at this very closely um, but these these rashes can last long after the contagious stage is over and may also appear many weeks after the onset of the infection now look at this this is the kind of conditions they're talking about these little like that you have little tiny blood vessels there that looks like somebody's elbow or foot I'm not sure Purpura is a term used to describe the purplish discoloration of the skin caused by bleeding into the skin. Well, why is it bleeding into its own area there? Something's breaking through the membranes or something's causing it to hemorrhage inside all over the place. Why? You're, you're, look at this. This is another one. Whatever that is. You're rash. But, you know, I you know, look at that. That's just, uh, that looks pretty nasty. Then you have these kind of rashes. That looks like it's almost like an infection, almost sepsis or something in the bloodstream. Um, And, but, it, but my point is, it appears something is clogging up or breaking down at that particular point. Is it some special bacteria in the, that lives there that's supposed to protect you there and it's dead? Or, you know, um, or is it something that's just filtering through there and a filtration at these particular places? Is, it clogs up any specific spots? But the kids and everybody's getting these rashes. Well, 21%, they say, is 21% is the only symptom. Hmm. One study found a rash was the only symptom of COVID for 21% of patients. That's staggering. Nobody's talking about that. Highly unlikely you know about this. Very few people do. This is from a survey that was done of the photographs and rashes and so forth. 17% 17 of the respondents tested positive for coronavirus reported a rash as the first symptom of the disease. They got a rash. For one in five people, that's 20% of all the people that had COVID said, reported a rash and were confirmed as being infected with coronavirus. The rash was their only symptom. One in five who reported a rash and were confirmed as being infected with the rash was their only symptom. They didn't have no sickness, no, you know, lung disease, nothing. It was the rash. It was their skin. What is causing this? Are they specifically susceptible because they don't have a specific bacteria? I think that could be. 
Okay, this is from Seeker. This is Go Call. And this is, a, it's called Your Textbooks Are Wrong. <laughs> this is what cells actually look like. Now listen to this. This is great. I still remember the moment. It's something I will never forget. The hair on my hands just stood up. It's a microscopic universe within each cell. This is an unprecedented view of the cellular world where we can actually see immune cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish in real time. Focusing only on the crawling immune cells, we've noticed two classes of them. One seemed was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know, what the environment is. There was another one that was kind of sloshing around with a lot of food in its belly. We can actually conceptualize and visualize and analyze the contents of each of these cellular compartments in this crawling immune cell as it's kind of, you know, scooping up its environment. I mean, that is a level of details no one's seen before. We're living in a... We're living in a new age. Now, I'm going to leave it at that for here, but the other video will be much, much deeper. All right? I love you. It's, it's something you should watch. So this is the introduction. The next one will be the uh, full enchilada.